I would like to take a slightly different uh, point of view also, uh, not related to the topic, uh, but uh, slightly broader. Uh, so I'm very happy that uh, the focus is on the future of education. See, even though we are here for our uh, so-called teaching abilities, but at least over here we are talking about education, which is for the students. And, uh, and uh, learning, say, the knowledge and all is a part of education, but education has far more to it. And uh, what we want is, uh, what is the best outcome of the education, of the time when they were on the roles of IIT? And to what extent we are able to do it through the various means which are available to us. Uh, so when we look at it from that kind of a prism, uh, it becomes quite clear that no single mean would be by itself sufficient. Uh, we need the in-person interactions of various kinds, both in, in the classroom, outside the classroom. We need, uh, as already mentioned, the best resources available to our students. So, which would obviously have to be through uh, predominantly an online mode. And we would need many other things which uh, we have not even tried uh, at scale or at sufficient, uh, you can say, uh, a sufficient number of efforts to really gauge their effectiveness and feasibility. So some of the things which I want to uh, highlight over here, first of all, uh, I come from the civil engineering department and uh, fundamentally, uh, very fundamentally, uh, the educational paradigm in civil engineering is different from all other departments in this institute. Uh, all of us are aware of the hot news items of the last couple of days, for example, coming out of Gujarat. So, uh, so, so that should help us uh, realize that uh, this is one department whose education, when it is used, does not provide the opportunity of issuing an update in the night which people will be able to download and improve uh, and correct the mistakes which have been made. This is a very, uh, you can say, an absolutist uh, uh, profession and uh, fundamentally different from all the other professions uh, whose education is imparted in IIT, where there are opportunities given to make corrections, make amends, learn as you do because of the consequences being so different in this particular field compared to others. So the very first or the very, uh, you can say, uh, foundational requirement of a civil engineering student is to learn the importance of responsibility. To learn that even small decisions, either taken or not taken, could have uh, uh, serious and unforeseen consequences on others. Now the question is that how do you have these skills imparted on the students through the classroom experience? And what is the role of the in-person interaction? What is the role of the, uh, you can say, uh, the online experience in being able to do that? And uh, I personally feel that both have a role. So we cannot say that one is fundamentally better than the other because uh, there are certain kinds of messaging, there are certain kinds of, uh, uh, you can say, uh, reaching out to the students, uh, a part of the education, not part of the knowledge, uh, part of the education regarding importance, regarding uh, understanding the consequences, uh, regarding realizing that uh, there are many factors on which the decision has to be taken and knowing how to solve the equation is one, one of it, but not alone. So these are the things which have to be given and it does not really matter whether you are giving it only in an interactive mode or only in an online mode or, or in a mixture. Uh, so so uh, I personally feel that uh, keeping in mind the relative advantages both bring. Uh, so we are going to see a very strong and enriching mix of both going forward. Uh, the second thing is uh, that again looking more into civil engineering that uh, education has to be very experiential. Uh, so uh, right from the very beginning when civil engineering started emerging as an educational field a couple of centuries ago, uh, it was always a good mix of what is today a classroom teaching 
and what is today a laboratory experience. So the laboratory was the avenue for the experiential learning. And of course, in classroom, you had the great Socrates and others teaching whatever they could. Now, that has extended uh, more because of the opportunities we have available uh, through the blended means. So uh, laboratories have a limitation of gross simplification. So now they get supplemented through digital means uh, by much more realistic situations which can also be imparted as part of the educational paradigm. And uh, so I had done a lot of experiments on these things about 15 years ago. So uh, developing uh, teaching materials under a virtual uh, uh, reality environment. So I was using a cave environment to create these uh, virtual reality uh, uh, teaching modules. And we could really see a difference that uh, a student spending five minutes or somebody spending five minutes in a cave in a completely a completely immersive virtual reality mode would have the kind of uh, recall value which requires hours and hours and hours of learning otherwise. So even at that time, it was quite clear that uh, blended learning was, uh, was going to be critical at least for uh, departments like civil engineering. Now since then, thanks to the advancement in technology, the costs have crashed and also familiarity with these tools have become uh, much more prevalent. So uh, I hope that we are going to see a lot more of these. The last point is related to uh, my own experience over the last two years in the online teaching mode. So uh, I would echo with uh, many others that uh, a lack of feel of what the students are taking back was always a stumbling block. And uh, particularly because I was concerned not about whether they know how to solve the equation and so on, but whether they are understanding that solving the equation may be a difference of life and death to people they are not even familiar with. So whether that uh, feel they are able to get out of the equation solutions or not. So which is only something which you can get when you see the people. So that was uh, a concern. At the same time, I could really see that uh, it was possible to uh, provide them visual experiences, which I could never have done if it was just a blackboard, blackboard kind of thing. So I was happy with those positive things, but always wondering that what will happen to this batch of people who are studying civil engineering these days, 20 years later, 30 years later, when they actually are in the position when they are going to take a decision. At that time, what we have done today, is it going to affect the safety and security of all of us? I think only time will tell. Thank you.